Hello Space Nerds, and welcome back to another exciting video from Space Chase. In this video today we bring you very exciting latest news. SpaceX and Elon Musk revealed plans to launch 20 starships from Starbase to orbit. Yeah, that's right. So come on, let's dive into the details. The Federal Aviation Administration has released a draft environmental evaluation of SpaceX's Starship. The public has until October 18th to comment on the draft evaluation. The draft environmental review of SpaceX's Starship operations in South Texas by the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration the FAA, indicates that the program can likely proceed with its first orbital launch, though protecting wildlife and habitat could be a stumbling block, and the approval process is still ongoing. The FAA issued a draft evaluation for public feedback on September 17th, and comments will be accepted through October 18th. October 6th and 7th, there will be two virtual public meetings. The environmental study has been mentioned by SpaceX as one of the main milestones that must be met before orbital Starship flights can begin, with CEO and founder Elon Musk claiming that in August the company may be ready in a matter of weeks once the process is completed. The whole clearance process is more extensive than the recently disclosed study, which concentrates on the environmental consequences of Starship launches and how they may be managed, particularly in the environmentally sensitive area around the launch site near Boca Chica, Texas. While most analyses of noise, launch debris, road closures, and other operations found no substantial consequences, biological resources proved to be a stumbling block. The FAA has found that the proposed activity would have a negative impact on species listed under the Federal Endangered Species Act the ESA, and important habitat designated under the ESA, according to a summary of the environmental assessment results of the Starship launches. The FAA has filed a biological evaluation for Boca Chica's terrestrial species to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and has asked for a formal consultation, according to the agency, which also warned that the environmental study would not be completed until this procedure was completed. The FAA is also planning a meeting with the National Marine Fisheries Service, but says there will be no adverse consequences on marine animals or habitat. The FAA also warned that, depending on the results of the public comment process, SpaceX may be required to react to additional proposals. For example, the FAA may decide to perform a more extensive environmental impact statement. It also gave no timetable for completing the work, but considering that the public has until mid-October to participate, and that the environmental work would also include two additional federal agencies with their own procedures to follow, it may take at least a few months. SpaceX had planned to launch Starship on an uncrewed round-the-world test trip in July, but the company is awaiting FAA certification. Musk has previously expressed dissatisfaction with FAA restrictions, claiming that the laws must be simplified if mankind is to launch rockets frequently enough to establish a settlement on Mars or achieve other ambitious space ambitions. Musk has said nothing about the process on Twitter this time around, except to invite the public to participate. Humanity's future on the Moon, Mars, and beyond depends on it, he wrote on Friday. During development, the FAA expects up to 20 Starship suborbital test flights per year and up to 5 Starship and Super Heavy orbital launches per year, according to the FAA. There are two elements to the Starship Deep Space Transportation System, a massive first-stage rocket named Super Heavy and an upper-stage spaceship called Starship. Every year, Musk intends to fly even more Starships to Mars colonies. The FAA stated in the 150-page draft evaluation that if SpaceX increased its speed, a fresh environmental study would be required. The FAA would assess the environmental consequences of planned future operations in part of utilizing information produced during the present process, the agency said in a statement released on Friday. Under a 2014 environmental study SpaceX produced for a plan to launch Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets from Boca Chica, previous Starship missions, all of which were low altitude, were able to proceed. The FAA indicated in a history of the launching location that SpaceX no longer plans to launch these spacecraft from Boca Chica. However, the 2014 assessment focused on considerably smaller vehicles than the Starship system, which stands at roughly 395 feet tall and is the world's largest rocket. SpaceX and the FAA have officially issued a Preliminary Environmental Assessment EA, of the company's South Texas Starship launch plans, which is a rare sign of material progress. The process of obtaining permission to launch Starship and its Super Heavy booster out of the wetlands of the South Texas coast, which will be the largest and most powerful rocket in spaceflight history when it first begins orbital launches, was never going to be simple. The Boca Chica site SpaceX ultimately settled on for its first private launch facilities, initially meant for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy but later committed to BFR, is simultaneously surrounded by sensitive coastal habitats populated by several threatened or endangered species and situated mere miles as the crow flies from a city whose temporary population fluctuates from a few thousand to tens of thousands. 
The draft's reception and analysis, as well as its timing, have been divided. On the one hand, SpaceX's draft environmental assessment, which was conducted with FAA approval and assistance from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service USFWS, provides a number of grounds for confidence. SpaceX has undertaken what is called a programmatic environmental assessment as an indication that the company is taking a realistic approach to the anticipated environmental review and launch license approval barriers that face Orbital South Texas Starship flights. Most significantly, this means that if granted, SpaceX's Starbase PEA will serve as a foundation or stepping stone, allowing the corporation to start small and gradually grow the scale and character of its Boca Chica ambitions. In that vein, SpaceX has suggested a maximum of 23 flight operations per year while Starship is still in development, including up to 20 suborbital Starship test flights and three orbital launches as part of Starbase's first dedicated environmental review, or Super Heavy Hops. SpaceX would start an operational phase after working out enough kinks for somewhat more confident Starship operations, allowing for up to five suborbital Starship launches and five orbital Starship launches as well as ship and booster landings back on land following all ten potential flights. In other words, SpaceX's first draft PEA is exceedingly cautious, asking approval for a bare-bones concept of operations for orbital Starship flights. A PEA and subsequent launch license accepted as-is would likely allow SpaceX just enough slack to execute basic Earth orbit launches and no more than one or two orbital refilling tests per year, with a maximum of three to five orbital launches per year. A five-launch limit, for example, would almost completely preclude SpaceX from sending Starship to Mars, the Moon, or maybe even high-energy Earth orbits without using up all of its yearly launch allotments on a single trip. Perhaps most crucially, the proposed draft PEA would clearly preclude SpaceX from completing the NASA Human Lander System HLS, moon landings for which it was awarded a nearly $3 billion contract. To carry a depot ship, HLS lander, and 1,200 tons of fuel to orbit, each HLS Starship moon landing is estimated to take anywhere from 10 to 16 flights. That is, however, a favorable thing in terms of SpaceX's chances of constructing Starship as fast as possible. Above all, the FAA should find SpaceX's slim downdraft PEA considerably simpler to accept than a PEA that seeks approval for Starship's ultimate aspirations, dozens to hundreds of launches per year from the start. In theory, after this bare-bones PEA has been authorized, SpaceX will be able to build on it with additional environmental evaluations, such as increasing Starship's maximum launch cadence. Of course, before any of the above matters, SpaceX needs the FAA to transform this first draft PEA into a favorable environmental assessment. SpaceX looks to have a good chance of getting a finding of no significant effect, FONSI, or mitigated FONSI conclusion based on the substance of the drought itself and accompanying attachments. However, SpaceX began the process of developing that draft in mid-2020, with the FAA announcing it in November 2020. The inference is that the FAA dragged out a draft release process that should have lasted 3-4 to four months into a grueling 10-15 to 15 month experience, according to some estimates. When you consider the hard struggle SpaceX is expected to face in South Texas for an orbital Starship launch license, it's becoming increasingly probable that Starship, Super Heavy, and Starbase will be technically ready for orbital launch tests long before the FAA is ready to approve or license them. Unless there are any delays, the public has until mid-October to read and comment on SpaceX's draft PEA, following which the FAA and SpaceX will examine the comments and hopefully conclude the study. Even if the FAA were to return a best-case FONSI in only two months, clearing Starbase of environmental launch obstacles, it's difficult to imagine the agency approving an orbital Starship launch license, or even a one-off experimental permission, in the last weeks of 2021. In the end, nothing short of a small miracle will be enough to keep the FAA's environmental assessment and license hurdles from postponing Starship's orbital launch debut. There's a chance that Starship, Super Heavy, and Starbase's orbital launch site won't be ready for orbital launches by the end of the year, but it's becoming increasingly impossible to believe that all three won't be proof-tested, qualified, and ready to go in the next month or two. We'll have to wait and watch how the cards fall for the time being. That's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for such exciting content and updates. Until next time.